Hello, my name's Andy Jordan, and today I'm going to take you through some of Barnes Wallace's inventions, especially his earthquake bombs and bouncing bombs. So here we have the tall boy small. This was a demonstration bomb, experimental prototype, weighing a mere 4,000 pounds, developed in 1943. And then this led on to the bigger earthquake bombs that saw action. So from this prototype bomb, we can now lead on to the real things. So we'll go to the, the little brother of the Grand Slam outside the tall boy. So follow me. This is the tall boy. It weighs in at 12,000 pounds. The tail fins are twisted to knock five degrees to get a 200 RPM spin. It would drop at approximately 750 mile an hour. So-called earthquake bomb. It didn't have to hit the target bury up to 100 feet underground, explode and just knock the foundations of any building out. So these were dropped from the Avro Lancaster bomber, the only aircraft at the time that was big enough to carry the bomb. Used to very great effect against viaducts, U-boat and E-boat pens, railway tunnels, canals, very, very devastating bomb. So I'll introduce you to Dell Evans. He's one of the two that are going to restore this bomb when the weather warms up a little bit. So, so this is Brooklyn's tall boy bomb, uh, historically actually more important than the big brother, the Grand Slam that's in there. About 850 of these were made. They're uh, famous for knocking out the turpits uh, and also for doing the V-weapon sites in northern France. Uh, so like La Capole and the Blockhouse and also the V3 uh, long gun that Hitler was developing. Uh, this destroyed that as well. Uh, at the moment we're seeking to refurbish it. Uh, currently we've just cleaned all the moss off, washed it off and we're waiting for the better weather uh, and then we need to uh, decide what's going to be done with regards to colour matching the paint so research is being done on that and also it's got a certain amount of exfoliation corrosion particularly on the fins that will need sorting out as well. And this is the little brother to the Grand Slam which we'll go and have a look at. So this is the tall boy's big brother this is the Grand Slam that Dell mentioned a minute ago. 22,000 pounds in weight or 10 tonnes. The warhead is from here onwards, the green section. The explosive used in it was called Torpex and it was originally developed for torpedoes. Very, very volatile. It didn't like being rubbed up the wrong way. So the inside of the warhead was hand polished and varnished to stop it getting rubbed up the wrong way. And then it was sealed off with a layer of TNT. The idea of the bomb was it would fall faster than the speed of sound. On impact, the tail section would break off. The warhead would bury down into the ground up to 100 feet and then go off with devastating effect, as we can see here. This aerial picture here is a Lancaster bomber flying over the railway viaduct at Bielefeld in Germany. And this picture here is the after effects of that raid on that viaduct. So probably not one direct hit, as you can see from there being no craters directly on the viaduct. But they've landed very close by, shaken the foundations out, the whole lot has collapsed. So now we'll go on to what Prans was is probably the most famous for, the bouncing bombs. There were two. There was the upkeep, the Dan Buster's raid bomb, and there was the highball, the anti-shipping bomb. Upkeep to be dropped from Lancaster's, highball from the twin engine Mosquito being smaller. They were developed in tandem, but the upkeep was ready first and the Admiralty really didn't want the upkeep to be used before the highball had been released. But the problem was on the dams raid, they needed the water level to be at the absolute maximum in the spring to use the water pressure to assist in the explosive effect of the bomb. So unfortunately the Admiralty didn't get their way, hence this bomb never made action. So this is the upkeep bomb, 9,250 pounds in weight, 6,600 pounds of that was the same explosive used in the Grand Slam and the Torboy, Torpex. Basically it was spun up with a back spin at 500 RPM, carried by a special Lancaster, the type 464, because the bomb was the Vickers type 464. So Avro built 23 fuselages specifically to carry this bomb, 19 went on the raids, unfortunately only 11 came back the loss of 53 crew and three taken prisoner. The bomb was spun with a 500 RPM backspin. Had to be dropped from exactly 60 feet at a speed of 232 miles an hour 
and it had to be dropped the correct distance from the dam as well. So this was developed, it's called the Dan Site, D-A-N-N, after Wing Commander Dan. And the bomb aimer would put it to his eye, and when the two towers of the dam lined up with these pens, that was the time to drop the bomb. Once the bomb had skipped over the anti-torpedo nets and hit the dam, having a backspin on it, it naturally wanted to climb down the wall. So it would be tight up against the dam wall for maximum impact to use the pressure of the water to assist with the blast. And at this end here are the fuses. And they're called hydrostatic pistols. There was three of them. And they were set to detonate at 30 feet of depth. In the centre here, we have the self-destruct fuse. This was designed to blow up the bomb after 30 seconds in the event of it not being detonated by the hydrostatic pistols or the bomb being dropped, missing the dam, or the aircraft going down. Unfortunately, one bomb did fall into enemy hands because for that self-destruct fuse to work, the bomb had to be dropped. And one of the Lancasters hit power lines and crashed with the bomb intact without being dropped. So the enemy did get their hands on one of these bombs. So this is a replica of the catapult that Barnes Wallace used to test. Little wooden balls that were prototypes to the genuine bouncing bombs. The ball was put in there, the whole thing was cranked back and it even had a tiny little piece of sprung loaded wire here so as the wooden ball flew out it put the correct backspin on the wooden ball. So these are some of the types of bouncing bomb or models of bouncing bomb that were first tested. As they evolved they decided to go onto the barrel shape, it was cheaper and also kept its accuracy in a straight line better. Initially they had an outer wooden casing, but it was found the outer wooden casing would just shatter on impact, but the bomb would survive and carry on bouncing. So they dispensed with that altogether. The reason this bomb isn't the same shape as the one you see in the Dam Busters film, the original film, is because this bomb was still covered under the 30 year act. So the filmmakers had to guess the shape for the film. So the actual dam's raid took place between, on the night of May the 16th and 17th, 1943 when the water level was at absolute peak to get, create maximum impact from the bombs. Otherwise, you'd need a lot bigger bomb if it wasn't directly against the damn wall. This is a diagram in the Daily Express newspaper about the Dam Busters raid, an anniversary, 70th anniversary. There is one small error in here. It wasn't spun by an electric motor. It was spun by a hydraulic motor via a V-belt to the same end as the fuses. And a pair of arms supported the bomb and they were sprung apart to release the bomb. So here, here we have a display and a picture to commemorate 617 Squadron, the Dam Busters, led by Guy Gibson, VC. The Mosquito was going to carry the highball anti-shipping bomb. And here we have the Lancasters that carried the upkeep, the tall boy, the Grand Slam. Here we have a section of the Tirpitz deck from Tromso, Norway, the Fjord, donated very kindly by the Norwegians to us. The Tirpitz was basically, it was crippled in action, parked up this fjord, but it was still being used as a floating gun platform. It could fire 15 inch shells, just shy of 23 miles. So it's still a great threat to Allied shipping. A lot of attacks were made on the Tirpitz, none successful. It was bristling with anti-aircraft guns, they were all around the top of the, wall, the walls of the field as well. There were smoke generators to camouflage a ship in event of air raids. So in the end, they sent some Lancasters over with tall boys. Two were a direct hit, one near miss. The whole ship just capsized and sank. I hope you've enjoyed your visit to the stratosphere chamber with me today. And please come and see us again.